From mysterious disappearances to fighting on the main stage, competitive Call of Duty has had its fair share of drama and controversy over the years. Layer 1 of the iceberg represents trivia and moments of which most fans are aware, but as we go deeper, we discover increasingly more obscure events and theories. This might be the most insane iceberg video you will ever watch, and it all starts with an iconic moment at UMG Chicago in 2012. With the recent release of Black Ops 2, teams from across North America battled it out to find out who was the best team in the game early on. And the grand final between Complexity and Optic Gaming did not disappoint. Oh, hell, nine seconds uh -oh. left. It's coming down the wire. And Fuse gets away. Five seconds. And the worst like Optic. Optic will has this run out. Fan favorites Optic emerged victorious in Chicago. Optic fans, known as the Green Wall, went wild as their team clutched up in the closing moments of the game. Little did they know, the fun wouldn't last forever. Nature got a little too close to the complexity players when celebrating, especially with controversy during the event around the use of the Select Fire Full Auto FAL during the tournament, and Team Captain Aix was not happy to say the least. He pushed me when I went to go shake their hands. Then again, you know, emotions were flying high, so I can't really blame him for that. But uh, me and him have never gotten along. But the pair soon made up at a future event, doing an interview together on stage. It seemed like this could be the end of any drama between Complexity and Optic, and the end of that particular storyline. Or so we thought. From Super Bowl 51 to the Champions League final in 2005, there have been some miraculous comebacks in the sporting world. But in esports, no comeback is as iconic as the full sail choke. At the MLG Fall Invitational in 2013, held at Full Sail University, Optic and Complexity clashed yet again. This was the final tournament of the season before the arrival of Call of Duty Ghosts. Complexity had taken a 3-1 lead, and were just one map away from winning another championship. But Optic was certainly not going to roll over and let them win. Optic took a commanding 5-0 lead on Express Search and Destroy and the series seemed destined to go to a map 6 at least. But then, things changed drastically. Optic, if they can finish oh. the round, Krim gets one though. those. But he is going to be called out, catches oh. Nayshot in... Oh, in transition, one more player, can Krim get the one on three? Oh, he's fighting Shot him fired. Oh! Krim 6, Krim! Krim 6 with the one on three clutch, complexity, stayed alive. Close Saw the rotation from Optic, going to the A-bomb site, one's going for the bomb plant. Good fight, J-Cap here on the bridge. Nice. Shots, takes out, come, fight J-Cap on the bridge. Ace, J-Cap, uh -oh, did he get away? Him. The ninja J-Cap here is going to come down to one final fight. Oh, Ace finds the picks up the kill! Ace with the 1v2 clutch, complexity winning their fourth oh. straight round. Ace will let him know about that one. It is all up to Nature on a 1 on 3. I think they were down, but they were off by 5 rounds. Crim 6 takes oh Ace and there go. Complexity, come back. Down. Optic became the first team in history to let a 5 0 lead slip away in Search and Destroy. To make matters worse, Complexity then went on a dynasty run, dominating the next season as well. Fortunately for Optic, this misery would not last forever. A certain player would change their fortunes forever. Matthew Formal Piper, a rising star in 2014 after making a name for himself in Halo, arrived to the Optic roster and formed an instant connection with Skump. At UMG Orlando, Skump emphasized just how much he loved his duo, with arguably the funniest listening ever. Let's go, Let's go with that! You sexy man! <laughs> Each tournament victory strengthened their friendship until an iconic clan tag was created, T2P, which stands for Time to Pound. Time to Pound? The abbreviation was created due to their frequent treatment of the opposition during the Jetpack era. Bro, there's a reason why this whole Time to Pound gimmick was a thing, man. Scump, however, has hinted that it may stand for something else. Top 2%, you heard? Whatever it stands for, one thing is certain. Scump and Formal have delivered us countless entertaining moments over the years. For Formal, none is more iconic than what he said in the Modern Warfare season. In a pickup game between pro players in MW19, Formal joined forces with Doug, Sense, and Martin himself. Unfortunately for them, they lost the map on Ramaza Hardpoint. But it wasn't his team's score which caught Formal's attention on the scoreboard. Might be able to make it. We gotta go, we gotta go. Yeah. We had to go. Oh, they hit all, they hit all, they hit Seven? <laughs> Seven. Yeah, I think I need to just pre-aim and slow down. I'm like literally sprinting into stuff. 
I don't know what you gotta do, dog, but you gotta figure shit out, seven. But this isn't the only moment that Sensuous found himself in the headlines for. The average pro player looks something like this. Doug Sensor Martin, on the other hand, looks like this. Despite having an unconventional build for a professional gamer, Sensor proved to the world that it was possible to succeed in both avenues. Three versus three, time is ticking. Oh, Sensor! He just got a kill on Bubble Game by a second! Sensor! Unbelievable play! Valley's Nature, one on three. He's gonna get the kill though. 29 seconds left. Bomb down. Can he stay alive? Bates, you now! Bates win the championship! But it wasn't just what he did on the map that caught people's attention because Sensor plays the entire event with a sleeveless jersey. Since then, he has been wearing the exclusive jersey at nearly every tournament he's attended, flexing his biceps across the world. Things have got to a point where he, maybe sarcastically, declined a pro contract by the New York Subliners because they wouldn't let him wear it. But if you thought he was done there, best think again. In a recent online tournament, he ditched the shirt completely. The sleeveless jersey meme is iconic in its own right, but there is one weapon that has gone even further. And who better than the pioneer of COD Esports to be responsible? At the World Championship in 2015, Optic were undoubtedly the favourites to win it all. Natron had the chance to make history and become the first ever player to win two $1 million tournaments. History was definitely made, but for all the wrong reasons. Optic crashed out in 7th place, at the time their worst champs finish ever. And the scapegoat for this loss was none other than Nadejot for what he did during map 2. At that time, there were two weapons that were predominantly used by every pro player. The BAL-27, the assault rifle choice, or the ASM-1, the SMG option. However, Nadejot decided to push his luck by briefly trying a different weapon, the HBRA-3. In a must-win match, the stakes couldn't have been higher, but unfortunately, Nade failed to have any impact on Biolab with the unconventional loadout. The weapon was technically viable though, and went on to dominate the search and destroy scene shortly after the event. But it's safe to say that his teammates were not too happy with Nade Jot's decision. Like, we were pissed. So Nade sort of got the vibe he that, you guys, vibe. that yeah. you guys were done. He pulled out a f***ing HBR, like... Yeah, I mean, in, in his... <laughs> in... Like... Nade Jot, however, deserves his flowers for his contributions to the competitive scene. His content on YouTube helps draw thousands of fans to esports, making a significant impact on its growth early on. Nade always ended his videos in the same way. In YouTube, we'll see you fudge later. Which caught on in the community. However, nobody expected this catchphrase to backfire in the way that it did. At the 2016 World Championship, Optic suffered another heartbreaking 7th place exit. And while Nadejot didn't feature on this occasion, that didn't stop a certain caster from paying homage to him. The gaming, we will see you fudging later. See but if you're looking for iconic lines from the true grassroots days of COD Esports, look no further than the infamous killer Choo Choo Train moment. Midway of the Black Ops 2 season, world champions for Eco Impact disbanded, with star player Karma moving on to new ventures. At UMG Atlanta in 2013, then, the stage was set for a fiery matchup Karma of Envy against his former teammates, now on Epsilon. Karma, however, did not get to prove his old teammates wrong. What happened instead will be remembered forever. Karma, you are nervous! Easy point! Easy point! Zip him up! Zip him up! Who can't anchor, Damon? Who can't anchor? Zip him up! Look at my bank account! You're sitting here watching! But these were far from the only heated moments which involved the 2013 World Champions. With COD Esports growing at a rapid rate, pro players were drawing impressive numbers streaming on Twitch. For players like Skump and Nadejot, their numbers were crazy high. But nobody expected Parasite to rival them on some occasions. Except fans weren't tuning in for his gameplay, but for his team's iconic meltdowns. Your philosophies get you 12th place. Mine get me T3. Shut up. It's embarrassing, man. I'm losing the optic, dude. You're not comprehending ah. it. I understand what I need to do. So ah, dude, you're a f***ing loser, dog. I lost all f***ing respect for you, dude. Get the I'm not done, dude. I'm done, like... On the topic of Twitch, you may have seen the chat spamming Clay whenever a pro falls off the map, a meme that's extended all the way to Counter-Strike and even beyond. This is because the man himself was notorious for pulling that very stunt back in the jetpack era especially. This could be so deadly. Gets one, gets two, the dart coming in. And then he and just runs off the side of the map. Things that even got to the point where a Twitter account was made to notify the world whenever he fell to his death. 
At the MLG Fall Invitational in 2013, one of the best teams in the game, Unite, played fan favourites Optic Gaming. And with Optic's home flag being snuck out of their base, it looked certain the game would end up tied. Oh, look at that! Karma! Karma for Big T! Nate Shot is there! They got Nate Shot is there! Due to the van's importance in the map, it has been nicknamed the Optic Van. The meme has lived on for well over 10 years in various ways, such as Optic recreating the van in real life, the developers acknowledging the van's notoriety, and any time a vehicle unexpectedly explodes, fans and even players themselves will call it the Optic Van. This layer is where things get a little more interesting, and what better way to start than with one of the more ridiculous incidents of the last five years. Many of you may remember Fastballer for losing a famous 1 vs 1 against Optic Karma on Crusher Search and Destroy at CWL Atlanta 2017. Unfortunately for Fastballer, he will be remembered for far worse. In the Black Ops 4 season in 2019, Fastballer was dropped from Accelerate Gaming's roster for allegedly being toxic. This infuriated him. He had grinded for years to finally compete against the best players in the world, and Fastballer decided to go out in style. While Fastballer scored sweet revenge on his former teammates, it did not come without a cost. The COD community gave him the nickname Fast Clogger, and he has never made it back to the league ever since. Another player who will likely never make it back to the league is Jimbo, but Jimbo's crime is far more serious than merely clogging a toilet. One year after his appearance on Paris Legion in the CDL in 2022, he was at the Amateur World Championship known as Challengers Champs, with players from all across the world arriving in the hopes of winning it all. Tier 2 CODs doesn't boast lucrative prize winnings, but many players are fine with that, competing instead to prove themselves to the CDL teams. Except one player decided to play dirty in the hopes of getting noticed. In a match between Orbit and Omit, one player randomly disconnected from map 4 of the series. That player was Jimbo, and we would later find out the disconnect was not due to connection issues. It turns out that Activision had just finished a ban wave during the tournament, which targeted hackers and those using cheating software. You're cheating online, you come to the biggest tournament of the year with three of your teammates, and then you get them forfeited. I can't imagine the humiliation. This proved that Jimbo had been cheating prior to the event, which one of his competitors had already suspected. The same player asked me to monitor cam for him, and I did it. And they wanted me to send it to them, and I sent it to them right away. I live streamed it for them, sent them everything they needed. And this time around, the same player is dropping 3.0s on us, absolutely going crazy, and we just asked for a cam link, and they directly told us no. Sensor even recently claims he may have deployed hacks at the event itself. Oh, USB, he used it for soft aim. He used it for soft aim on land. He was using a soft aim USB on land. I can't make that up. That's exactly what he did. Following the incident, Jimbo made sure to lay low for a few months, briefly changing his game attack to Lao to try and fly under the radar before attempting to make a comeback in 2024. However, the admins have stated that Jimbo is not eligible to play and will not be participating ever again. Using hacks to gain an unfair advantage is maybe the oldest trick in the book, but there was one allegation in 2016 which took all this to a totally new level. Former world champion Adam Killer Sloss has a track record for making various excuses when he loses gunfights. Blue Tiger? Where did he get- But none was more memorable than what he alleged back in 2016. Bro, I'm looking at the back of the, back of the ethernet cables. Mine is gray and my whole team's is blue. Well, there is no real evidence to suggest that the color of the ethernet cord has any performance variation. Who are we to deny what killer feels? He believed otherwise and used it as rather some excuse for his loss at the World Championship that year, a tournament in which he no-showed for his final game in pool play. No showing is one matter, but being barred from the event is a completely different story. For Hook of the Los Angeles Thieves though, this was the reality. That he wasn't prevented from playing for in-game reasons like Jimbo, at Major 4 in the Cold War season, CDL teams prepared for their first event back on land since the pandemic. This was an exciting time for many players, relishing the opportunity to return to a level playing field. All they had to do was submit a COVID test and they could participate. A simple enough task, you would think. But for Hook, this did not seem to be the case. It turned out that Hook had misspelled his name on the test, typing a W instead of an E for his first name, Kyler. He then failed to turn up in time to correct this error and was prevented from playing the tournament as a result, with Draza subbing in for the event. This spells the end of Hook's time on Thieves and was actually a huge moment in COD history looking back. 
If Draza had never subbed in, the legendary LA Thieves team that won the World Championship in the following season may never have been formed. Undoubtedly a moment to forget for Hook, but unfortunately for him, one account on X.com will make sure he never forgets. Speaking of moments to forget, it's hard not to remember arguably the worst performance in Call of Duty history. Many would associate a bad performance with a bad player, but this proves that even the MVPs can suffer from the occasional shocker. At MLG Orlando in 2016, Champs MVP Clayster had a rough time against Envy, dropping just 4 kills the entire CTF map. And yes. you gotta wonder what happened with Clayster this game, that's like you said. Well, I agree, it's very, not right. Something's very, not right. something happened here. And I'm not entirely sure of what it is, but 4-22 is not what he does. It seemed like Clayster's record low 0.18 KD ratio in a respawn would never be surpassed. But just one year later, former teammate Zuma said, hold my beer. I suppose the lights were just too bright. Zuma is 3-22. When we went to his screen, he was tweaking. He wasn't able to hit his shots. That is the most off game I have seen from him in his career so far. There is some debate on the story behind the 4-23. in Today, Zuma pushes the stage lights obscuring his vision narrative. These mother shine two big ass lights directly into my screen. My screen chat was white. But apparently at the time, the production team did not want Zuma making this information public due to a rather major mistake on their side. So Zuma initially blamed a controller problem. We've talked about the controller issues before. We talked about this. Just ask Clay, ask him. Low kill performances in a search and destroy map are slightly more forgivable, but faltering in back-to-back -back maps will get you talked about for years to come. In the Call of Duty Vanguard season, LA Thieves were up against arguably the best team at the time in Atlanta phase. In map 2, Octane was unfortunate enough to drop a donut. Thieves, however, took the series to a final map regardless. This was Octane's chance to redeem himself and help secure his team the dub. But what happened instead would haunt him for the rest of his career. I, that has to be, I, maybe in Call of Duty history, but even for like the CDL, I mean, I, I've never seen double donuts. But this was far from the only mishap which occurred during the Vanguard season. After winning the first major of the year, many expected Optic Texas to continue dominating for the rest of the season. However, this was certainly not the case. An injury to their in-game leader Illy halted all of their momentum for Major 2, but it was what happened at Major 3 which many believe was the dagger to finish the team off. After taking a 1-0 lead against Thieves in the loser's bracket, Optic followed this up with a commanding 4-1 advantage on Berlin Search and Destroy, just two rounds away from taking a comfortable 2-0 lead. But things all changed in the next round, as Dashi decided to take a dive into the waters of Berlin, leaving teammate Shotzi in a 1 vs 2, which he lost. Following this moment, Optic let the lead slip away, losing the map and eventually the series. The term splashy began reverberating in the community to mark this moment, which many believed made Optic players lose all their composure for the rest of the season. Dashi, however, has more positive career moments than on the negative, one of which was his infamous 20 kill search and destroy performance on LAN, which was not even shown on stream. 20 kills in search and destroy seems a magical barrier that no pro is able to surpass. Ever since Crimsix himself set the record back in 2014, only two players have matched this feat in a 4 vs 4 setting. Dashi, as previously mentioned, and Shawnee. It remains to be seen if any player will ever break this elusive record. If the number 20 is familiar for Crimsix, the number 10 certainly should be for Team Envy. Because at COD Champs 2017, the 10 nothing advantage for United on a game of Precinct Uplink certainly comes to mind. With 4 minutes on the clock, Envy had to do the unthinkable in a crucial game in the winner's semi-finals. But minute after minute, what seemed like an impossible feat slowly became a reality. Usually the listen-ins with the player communications do not last this long, but MLG Hall of Famer Chris Puckett instructed the broadcast not to return to the commentators, thereby creating one of the most memorable moments in Call of Duty history. So, so hard. Go! Let's go, baby. Uplink is definitely a fan favorite game owning competitive COD, but with the transition back to boots on the ground gameplay for 2018 season, Uplink was forced to the sidelines indefinitely. But what many people do not know, there was a possibility of it staying in the World War II season. This is because Sledgehammer Games created their own rendition of Uplink known as Gridiron, with the portals on the ground. 
It's safe to say though, this game mode did not go down so well. It was soon ditched for Capture the Flag, although the voting was apparently very close between the two game modes at the time between the pro players. We did try Uplink without jetpacks in World War II. Oh, Gridiron, yeah, yeah, do you remember no. that trolley sh Random arguments between players is nothing out of the ordinary in competitive COD, even on an organization like Optic where the vibes are usually high. When Embos and Clayser were on the team back in the day, things got rather heated in a scrim, birthing one of the more creative disses that we have ever heard. Am I just gonna have to take some of your food away when I get up to the house? <laughs> oh, <laughs> <you're dead. laughs> I hate when you say dumb shit like that, you ponytail bitch, you WWE star. <laughs> <laughs> Call of Duty multiplayer was always created for a fun and casual experience, but the same weapons and mechanics at the pro level create a rather different story. This is where gentlemen's agreements come in, also known as GAs, where players agree amongst each other to ban something eligible in the game that they deem overpowered or cheesy or that's going to reduce the skill gap in the game. One of the most infamous GAs happened in the Vanguard season, following Los Angeles Grilla's miracle run from Losers Round 1 to eventual champions at Major 2. This victory was in large part due to Spartz's use of the unorthodox Volk assault rifle weapon. But GAs are also used for other occasions such as in-game bugs. The smoke grenade, for example, was banned in multiple titles due to the potential to see enemies through the smoke known as a one-way. GAs every year cause mass controversy within the community. One of the more common terms in today's competitive Call of Duty world is snaking, which may have baffled some people when they first heard it. It did previously refer to the snake glitch, explained here by Nadeshot back in MW3, but now describes a mechanic that involves sprinting, crouching and proning in quick succession, and therefore making it extremely hard to see your character in-game, also resembling a snake from some angles. This was a mechanic previously frowned upon in games such as Infinite Warfare, but over the years, different generations of pro players have disregarded the gentleman's agreement not to do it, and they got down and dirty, to the dismay of both fans and fellow competitors. However, in recent times, things are a lot less lenient. Any more than two pumps leads to a penalty enforced by Commissioner Zuma. For example, Subliners player Skies broke the GA early in the MW3 season, leading to his team being denied any warm-up scrims for an upcoming match. If you think that COD Pro's only skills are pressing a button in a video game, then you would be sorely mistaken, because a few players have got on to produce music. Embos is one of them. Now a content creator on Optic, he has released multiple songs under his artist name, RNL Bose, featuring bangers like One Night and Viral. But Embos wasn't the only one to enter the booth. Another COD pro by the name of Temp has also started to make music and even videos. Rain Rain and Firefly are just a few of the hits that he's released, but recently he's stopped producing new songs to focus fully on competing. We begin Layer 3 with one of the more comical stories of the CDL era. Toronto Ultra in 2021 will go down as one of the best teams since the inception of the league. Kami in particular was known for being one of the best players in the game, especially at the end of the year. But at the start of the season, he didn't exactly light up the scoreboard, and he was known for something rather different and more controversial. One day, Kami tweeted something out that would have been perfectly acceptable to his countrymen, but to his employers Toronto Ultra, this was deeply unacceptable. In Scotland, his native country, this curse word is used for rather different purposes than in North America, dividing the COD community to a great extent. As a result, Kami was forced by Ultra to go through what they deemed sensitivity training to ensure that he wouldn't do such a thing again. But thereafter, Kami's performance levels in-game drastically increased, leading many to believe that it was the sensitivity training that was the difference maker. But in a recent interview, Kami believed otherwise. Yeah, no, I still think it was stupid to this day. Like, obviously, was it like oh, an online course course. that you're just clicking through? Or no, it like no, it was like person? someone in a call, like always in a call. Yeah. Like a Zoom call class? Yeah, like a Zoom call, yeah. Bro. <laughs> Speaking of being disciplined, Clayster experienced some of his own reprimands back in Black Ops 3. The use of jetpacks in this title allowed players to get to various spots on the map that were not necessarily intended by the developers, but Clayster decided that since it wasn't mentioned in the rules, these spots were worth using anyway. So in a CWL online Pro League match, he jumped on top of a tree on the map Stronghold Search and Destroy to gain vision to the B bomb site. This swiftly led to a forfeit on Clayster's team FaZe Clan for using what was deemed an unintended line of sight. 
Clayster, however, was not happy about this ruling, explaining his thoughts in a rather in-depth video. Because on these spots, you're standing on something. But is it a glitch spot? I don't know. Is this intended or not? I don't know. There is a lip to the building. On the subject of glitches, we cannot forget the start glitch from MW19. This was done by pressing the start button upon dying to bring up a full screen overview of the map. However, instead of seeing your own teammates' locations, you would instead see it in the POV of the player who just killed you while the kill cam was running from their perspective. Here's Zuma using the glitch and showing its power. I'm a star glitch. I'm a star glitch. Alright, yo, two rock, one pushed up our crates, he's pushed up our P2 and went to it all. At least one team allegedly abused this in CDL matches. That team especially was the Minnesota Rocker, as they could be heard in a listening, reminding each other to seemingly abuse the glitch. Make sure watching cams, make sure watching cams. Silly of the Rocker, however, defended his team by stating that they were informed that other teams were already using the glitch. Luckily, this glitch was fixed just in time for the World Championship that August. But there wasn't just allegations of glitch abuse in MW19, there was one player who was accused of cheating straight up. Midway into the season, the Florida Mutineers picked up Awakening. Despite being an unproven rookie, they immediately found success with him, winning back-to-back -back tournaments with Awakening playing very well individually and some suggesting whether his awareness was rather too good to be true. At this point, the community and other players began to suspect he may be gaining an unfair advantage. This suspicious looking clip of Awakening further strengthened the narrative he could be using some form of cheat. Awakening, however, denied all of the rumours of him cheating that season, and there was never any concrete evidence of him doing so. You may have seen CDL trading cards like these floating around social media before. They are designed by Breaking Point's very own Lion Man, who has been producing them for several years. The cards give a snapshot of how a player has been performing stats-wise, but obviously lack data which can't be shown on the scoreboards. This means they're not entirely the best indicator of a player's actual performance, but others believe otherwise. Oh, I do know that there are some orgs that look at Reddit and those Lineman cards as like a very good indicator of how good players are. We know half these, these players are looking at player Jeez. cards. We know for a fact that these 6 through 12 teams are looking at player Does cards we and know? Reddit. Some theories have even suggested that potentially pros or even agents could have paid Mr. Lion Man to get themselves higher card numbers, although these reports do remain unfounded. Another key component of Call of Duty lore occurred in Infinite Warfare, again involving Adam Killer Sloss. But on this occasion, the accusations were rather more concrete, because there was one character in the game that was banned midway into the season called Synaptic. This character seemed to have a much slimmer frame than its counterparts, leading to advantages in terms of a smaller hitbox for the player that was using them. This led Killer to give it the name the Skinny Bot that went down in history, believing most of his deaths occurred because his bullets were going straight through the Skinny Bot. While Skinny Bot was only around for a few months, it is certainly one of the most iconic characters we have ever seen in competitive play. There have been plenty of overpowered weapons in Call of Duty, but back in 2019, there was one weapon which arguably helped a team win a tournament in its entirety. At CWL Fort Worth during Black Ops 4, Luminosity Gaming's Classic decided to go against the grain, opting to use the Rampart 17 instead of the conventional ICR and Maddox setups. With the FMJ2 attachment, the Rampart was able to connect with some absurd shots through walls, throwing their opponents off completely. This was critical to give the tournament victory to LG, a team that nobody had down as a top team in the game. The success, however, was short-lived. The gun was gentlemen's agreemented by the pros for the rest of the season. Uh, bless the Rampart. One of the most heartbreaking moments for Optic fans in their history, what happened at Major 2 in the Cold War season, needs no introduction. In Game 5 Round 11 between Optic and the Minnesota Rocker, accuracy was left in a seemingly unclutchable 1 vs 3. But what happened instead led to one of the most iconic commentary lines in COD Esports history. Fight! Accuracy! They line up! They line up for accuracy and he wins it! Are you kidding?! Equally as famous, though, was the response from the Optic camp, including from Scump. The literally heartbroken Kobe Pasta is still regularly used in the community to this very day. But that is just a line that you, you can't cross that. 
Because they weren't even congratulating their players. They were just Ignoring laughing. the fact that they won. Yeah. They were yeah, laughing. They highlighted Lamar's 1v3. They should have put Dude, the I, I, that. They were laughing yeah. at the literally distraught and, like, brokenheartedness of us. Mm -hmm. The infamous Riven call-out moment occurred in 2014, where former professional, commentator, and then Seattle Surge general manager Riven was rather too quiet for his teammates liking in practice on a strike zone domination back in Call of Duty Ghosts. But Riven was dumbfounded at this accusation, and his reaction afterwards was priceless. Hey, hey, I, got, I, got, I got one off. Uh, Riven, start talking. I'm not Dude, there's not a f f beat. There's stuff, nothing to call out. Matter. Jesus Christ, oh, man. Oh, all right, all right, I'm watching front B door. There's no one here. There's no one front B. There's no one front B. I'm in B. I got B flag. There's no one front B. There's no one boxes. No one boxes. I'm in B. I got B flag covered. There's no one here. No one here. No one here. I'll see you on front. I'll see you on front part. Be still clear. Be still clear. I'm looking closet. Closet clear as well. I'm looking front. I'm looking front. I'm so looking front. I'm so looking front. I'm upset behind the Yo, I'm D. No, it's over here. I'm watching front. I'm looking front. I'm watching front. Shut up and play. I'm not looking around. Come on, dude. You guys are doing me off. I got B. I got B. Loudness equalizer also known as Sound EQ, is a PC feature which pretty much broke the CDL when it was first discovered. You can go to the like advanced settings within In the loudness, loudness setting, and there's a there's a slider that says short to long, and like long is for like bar sounds and shit, and short's obviously for, for like closer and all that stuff, but you put it to the short side and you can literally hear everything like perfect direction. Your game is your game gets louder, by the way. I'm telling you right now, it's loudness 3.0. Nah, we need we Yo, is Ultra actually using the uh, loudness in the game? Or no. But nobody knew about that shit until got the end of bro. No, no, yeah. people know people That's knew about it. Yo, Colt about Havoc said he used it. I learned about it after a Zuma stream where they were trying to catch a hacker, and then he was like, no, listen, turn up the volume. And you could clearly hear that guy because the kid that was accused of cheating had loudness EQ on, bro. And I was like, bro, what does he have on? So I did some digging myself and I figured out what he had on. In the early days of competitive Call of Duty, some pro players found out that you could double tap the weapon switch button in order to cancel the reload. This became known as YYing due to the weapon switch button being on Y on Xbox controllers, the more predominant console at the time for online gaming, certainly the Xbox 360. However, what was once a very useful trick to avoid being caught reloading has also been seen as a detriment for some player. Even others in the past, such as Big Timer, they were known for YYing, but that player is Kenny of the modern day. He has quite the tendency to always YY, regardless of whether he actually needs to, and despite various attempts to stop doing so over the years, it hasn't really worked. Uh, in BO4, we re remapped his... Uh... YY to a D-pad and he still did it. Coins by Patrick X Price, the door dash is when a team slams the other team so fast that the match is over before a door dash order would even be delivered. Since then, it's going to be a widespread piece of lingo used by the entire community. One of the most embarrassing COD losses of all time features a young attach in Ghost Search and Destroy, round 11, one versus one. And let's just say things did not go to plan. You can't wall bang it. What are you doing? Attach! Are you a attach! Attach! You couldn't What the fuck did you just attach? I hate you, dude. So much. Bro, you could wall me. I was shooting a trophy. You could see in the video there were sparks flying out of the trophy because I was shooting it up the, oh, over the man. fence. Yeah. Don't get me started. During the French tournament ESWC in 2017, Optic and FaZe were about to play in grand finals, but it was held up by just dance grand finals for about two hours. Once the tournament resumed, Optic stomped FaZe, and Clay in particular got a bit cranky. Once again, we have to go all the way back to the beginning of the CDL. So much money was being poured into the scene that people just didn't know what to do with it. And since there was a league rule mandating two substitutes per team, some teams opted to bring in content creators and friends to their roster. There was no intention that they would ever actually play or help the team, and in return they would receive a minimum of $50,000 per year. Another layer, another Doug Center Martin moment, but this story is unlike any other. Back in the World War II season, teams needed pro points to qualify for the league. One way of earning them was to win five game battles matches every single day. But it was clear that the majority of the teams would cheat the system in some way by exchanging wins with another squad to just get them out of the way. But disaster struck for Center's team. They were caught red-handed cheating the system and subsequently punished. As a result, his team failed to qualify for the Pro League, missing out to evil geniuses. 
Doug was infuriated, and it was at this point where he decided to take things into his own hands. They need to wake up for a match versus Doom Clan at 10 a.m. It is now 2.30 in the morning. There is no way they're going to be able to find a place to play one match to get more points than us in order to pass us for the Call of Duty World League, right? I mean, they knew they had to beat Doom Clan in the morning because if they did not beat that team at 10 a.m., they had zero chance of making the league. So this match was very important for this team. They tweeted out at 2 a.m. saying, good night, going to bed. So we look over at their page and they have a match for 2.25 in the morning and then they get another match for 6.45 in the morning and 7.15 in the morning. I wanted to know how it's possible, first of all, for them to play this match if they're in a hotel room at the hotel. How did they get a PlayStation 4? How did they get a monitor with internet connection to play this match? And how did they get all four of these players to play in this match? Now, I don't have proof of that. I don't know at this point in time. Since his goal was unequivocally to find proof of evil geniuses cheating the system just like his team were. But his strategy of getting this evidence was legendary. In a bar after the matches were over, Sensor wore a wire in an attempt to record Nameless confessing. He tried to like, he wore a wire and he's asking me, so you played your GBs Friday? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, no, you didn't. Admit you didn't. And it was just, it was just insane. And then he like walked away. It was an insane discussion. I thought he wanted to fight me, whatever. And Krim goes, I guarantee he was wearing a wire. And we were just dying laughing and then there was a YouTube video. But that was not the end of Detective Doug. A few years later, he made a video on Nadia claiming to have exposed her for cheating. You may remember Red Reserve from back in the day. Initially starting off as a surrogate to FaZe Clan in Black Ops 2, the team was specifically designed for up and coming sniper talent, but then became an independent team in its own right. Unfortunately, their spell in competitive Call of Duty ended in controversial fashion. It turned out that Red foregoed paying their players, as they claimed that the Call of Duty team was not profitable. They even had the nerve to blame their players for this lack of profitability since they weren't providing top results in the Black Ops 4 season, and thus felt that not paying them was simply justified. Eventually, Red Reserve was simply liquidated, and their league spot was sold to FaZe Clan. But the community still has not forgotten about their shenanigans, especially with them still owing large sums of money to many players. Back in the World War II season, the CWL hosted a tournament over the pond in Birmingham in the United Kingdom. But it wasn't the weather which caught many players' attention, because after competing throughout the year on their trusted BenQ monitors, this event instead used Iyama monitors. This caused the game to feel different for many players, as they claimed there was serious input lag present on these devices. TJ Halley and Parasite were just a few of the players who expressed their anger, but there was one player who instead flourished. Bance of Splice went on to have his best performance of the season, many believing this was down to the Iyama monitors. He is sometimes still known as the Iyama Friar. Leaking roster changes has been popularized for a long time in mainstream sports, but in 2018 there was one individual who brought that over to the Call of Duty esports world. One day, a Reddit account by the name of Codsburner2018 Mania would go 10 for 10 in Roster Mania predictions. The most notable prediction was for the Optic Dynasty to break up, which they soon did. But roster changes were not the only thing posted by this mysterious account, because the Codburner also shared some other, far more personal details about players, leading the community to further speculate who exactly was behind the account. Who the hell is Codburner? Card burner, what I'm speculating, some people say they know who it is. I mean, I really, at the end of the day, I don't know exactly who it is, but it has to be the friend of a pro. After over a year since the account started posting, rumors eventually emerged that this account belonged to this ex account called Edgar, also known as Rich Guy. It's been said that Edgar had built many personal relationships behind the scenes with players, buying them dinners, gifting subs, and promising big things in the future. He was later called out for being a fraud by, you guessed it, Doug Sensor Martin. Edgar later disappeared from the limelight, but the community will never forget the cod burner and the CDL Intel account, which he sparked. Parasite has said some controversial things over the year, like calling Scump overrated. But in 2020, Parasite decided to take the toxicity to another level by DMing his teammate Zaptius' girlfriend in the middle of a series. After calling her dope and energetic, Parasite was understandably dropped from the team, despite the team placing second. But if that wasn't wild enough, Parasite would later tweet his frustrations at the decision, claiming it was for vibes instead. Zapsius was not happy in the slightest, prompting him to reveal the actual reason for the decision. Optic Gaming has always been the most popular team in competitive Call of Duty, leading many other teams to grow jealous of their success. 
in COD Ghosts, that manifested with a Skype chat. A Skype chat made, and mm -hmm. the original point of the chat was for everybody else to help each other. Mm -hmm. So it would be like, Ake, Slack, if you go live, send your viewers to him. And then people started saying, why don't we stop scrimming Optic? Anyway, so the chat starts talking about like, blacklisting Optic, and I made a joke. I said the fall of Optic. And that's, that's, that's what all of you guys saw, and that's what like, y your main reaction was. This message was soon leaked, prompting his friends on Optic to resent him for many years. Because of this blacklist, Hex's famous quote, hate on success, and success will hate on you, was born. For the 2019 season, Call of Duty switched to 5 vs 5, giving every team an extra player. But a certain player, by the name of Supreme Agility, seemed to do his best to make his team play with four players instead. Just before the first event of the season in Vegas, Supreme apparently was taken unwell, forcing his team to find a last minute replacement. And just a month later at the Pro League qualifier, he would claim to be sick once again, leaving his team in shock. The community was in uproar after hearing about his antics, calling him to be banned from all future events. Whether he was really ill, whether it was anxiety of playing on LAN, or something else, the community may never know. At the opening event of the Advanced Warfare season, Aches had a chip on his shoulder, as his former teammates Crimsix and Karma had left for Optic Gaming. He wanted to prove that they had made a mistake by leaving him, but on the night leading up to Championship Sunday, disaster had struck for Aches, who tweeted out a photo of his thumb in stitches. It was no, not no, a no. picture frame. That is a hundred percent. So how did you story. how did you break your hand on that picture frame, Pat? What were I you doing? I didn't break my hand. What revisionist history is this? Oh, how I did you slice your hand open? What did you do? What, what were you doing? I, what were you doing? I that just told you. There have been various explanations for what exactly caused the injury, with some suggesting that he cut it on glass while um, cranking that hog, shall we say? But it wouldn't be enough to stop Patty P. He persevered through the loser's bracket and made it to the grand finals, facing off against Optic Gaming, where he would beat the green wall in two best of fives, all with stitches in his thumb. Back at the World Championship in 2013, representation was required from all continents. The one issue, however, was that COD teams in Asia just weren't very good. Korean team Infi Dream went up against one of the top teams in complexity during a pool play game, and Crimsix and the team made sure to not hold back at all. Their legacy, however, does live on, but not for reasons you may think, because Deloshi's class setup was one for the ages. A riot shield with a Remington shotgun in his back pocket. At least he got this quick scope on Embos a year later, though. You've been running this sniper every single time. You gotta stop and just be like, oh my oh, god! He's done it! He's done it! Deloshi with a quick scope! Another classic pro player beef features Parasite once again. His former teammate Exotic bailed out on his team for evil geniuses, deeming them ineligible for pool play for the upcoming CWL Vegas tournament. To make matters worse, Exotic waited to tell his former team that he was leaving until right before the roster lock. Parasite was furious and let all his frustrations out on Twitter, with one of the more memeable copy pastas in the esports history. You may have seen this picture floating around social media, wondering exactly what the context is. It turns out that Scump and the Optic Gaming crew met up with rapper Lil Durk back in 2016, who also appeared on the Optic podcast. Ryan Bacardi is a name that many pro players Ooh, will recognize. In World War II's ranked play, Ryan Bacardi took down many pros and was on his way to becoming one of the top ranking players on the leaderboard. But his real breakout moments came when he matched up with Scump and absolutely went off. Bacardi, bro. <laughs> Yo, Bacardi just went off for the family. Oh, Let's go, baby! Bacardi just went off for the family, man! But in a big shock, Ryan never went pro, and it looks like he simply stopped playing upon the release of Modern Warfare 19. If you've ever played game battles, you might have gone through the tedious process of submitting proof. Back in Black Ops 2, an unknown player caught his opponent red-handed using a stun grenade, banned in the rule set it seems for the particular match. But the proof he submitted for this moment was unlike any other we have ever seen and probably will ever see again. Look, he killed me with a stun. A stun, he can't use a stun. Yeah, guys, look. Yeah, yeah look, guys, look, look. Hey, disconnected. Yeah, guys. Thanks for watching guys, GG, give me the viewing because I have the reason, they kill me with the stun and drop hose, yeah guys, thanks for watching. Selium has been the subject of many funny stories throughout the competitive Call of Duty community, but one of the best ones takes place at a pre-LAN that multiple teams apparently attended to practice in person before a tournament. Informal looks over the monitors, 
he's like, so can you stop snaking that? And he says, you can do it too, phase up. And fucking phased up through the monitor cracks, dude. Selium, however, refutes this story and claims that it was just said to make him look bad. That formal shit, whatever, like, obviously, all of you guys know it's fake, like the fake story, but it's actually, it's actually hilarious reading comments saying that, like, he actually said that shit when that, that shit never happened. Optic Dashi is one of the most talented players in COD history, but there was a time where his form was lacking, and he was even benched in the middle of the MW19 season. However, after teammate Kenny was hit offline at COD Champs against Los Angeles Grillers, Optic Gaming Los Angeles had no choice but to sub Dashi back in for a crucial Map 5 Piccadilly. Despite just waking up, Dashi did not disappoint with the sniper, helping Optic to win the series. This would be the last map he played that season, and Dashi decided to go out in style with one of the coldest tweets in COD history. In Infinite Warfare, the CWL switched from a regional format to an international one, and it didn't take long for the NA vs EU rivalries to start getting created. Rated of Team Orbit tried to get inside Clayster's head by changing his clan tag in-game to Tiff, the name of Clayster's girlfriend. However, Clay had the last laugh of the event as FaZe claims the top spot. The drama of the Cold War Optic team though does not stop there, as their communication in a heated matchup against the Atlanta FaZe was posted by the CDL themselves. Not only could videos like this expose potential strategies that teams use, they also showed trash talk between the teams that some don't want to be seen in public. Like they're thinking they have set strats on this map, but they're just gonna get dogged. <laughs> <laughs> the result was lots of backlash from the Optic team themselves and other pros throughout the league. We start with one of the most scandalous incidents in the CDL era. Substance abuse has long been a talking point in the world of esports, with many players hoping to gain any advantage that they possibly can. Well, I tried it. I tried it once. Oh, you did try it once. Okay, I'll, I'll just, I'll spill it. Oh, here we I, go. I tried it once last year in Vanguard against Optic, which was my, <laughs> one of my best games in a long time. <laughs> I went 10 and 30 first map. <laughs> I went to the bathroom, I started slapping myself in the face saying, wake the f up. I never touched it again. Okay. But it has never been something admitted by the players themselves due to fear of being reprimanded or even banned. However, in 2021, Hook at the Dallas Empire decided it was time to speak up on the issue. It's not really a secret, you know. Um, but basically, I won champs and I didn't really feel good on the inside. Of course, I was very grateful for winning. Um, it showed that we worked hard and, you know, we got the win. I felt good about that. But you know, those couple days afterwards, I didn't feel good. And it was mainly because of one thing. I, at the time, was taking Adderall. I first took Adderall when I was like 18, 19. And um, yeah, I was like on and off for a bit. And Following this video put out by Hook, Zuma was prepared to spotlight the issue himself on his own show, The Flank. But instead, Zuma would be told not to by the CDL higher-ups, as shown by this clip of Benjay Nassim name-dropping commissioner Joanna Ferries. What's even crazier though is that Hook was never officially punished by the league for this confession, despite admitting to using Adderall to win the world championship. Since then, a system to test players has been implemented, with the CDL hoping this ends any controversy once and for all, although there has been some speculation as to how accurate this testing really is. Because in 2024, Illy found himself under the spotlight for what many people believe was clear substance abuse. In a post-game interview at Major One, Illy's behavior was seemingly strange. Start playing tighter towards, like, well, like, that doesn't matter, yep. but like, yeah. We got the piece P4, we got the castle row, and yeah, yeah like, I, I, like, yeah, we just, we, we just, we just believed. And then yeah. we ended up breaking P1, yeah, yeah, you know how it went. Yeah. Similar behavior was seen in a different interview, leading many people to be concerned for his health. With this incident, the nickname Pilly was born. And although he did deny anything strange was happening, just a few days later, Illy was benched and then released with no reasoning from his team. When Illy was rumored to join another roster, all opportunities fell through and we can only hope that Illy is doing well and will make a return to the CDL soon. Substance abuse is one way to gain an advantage, but using a keyboard and mouse is a different story entirely. Before he was world champion, Envoy had a terrible reputation in the community as he would effectively cheat in search and destroy matches by using a keyboard and mouse. 
In games such as Black Ops 3 with advanced movement, using such equipment is a clear advantage, helping players aim very precisely over long distances compared to what is possible on a controller, especially considering keyboard and mouse and aim assist would therefore be possible. And while this input device was banned by tournament organizers, Envoy just didn't seem to care, and would keyboard anyway despite it being a bannable offense. As Call of Duty switched to franchising, the sudden investment created many new job opportunities. Dallas Empire players helped their friend Mutex get a job as an analyst, despite zero experience in the role. However, Mutex would never get to showcase his talents, with multiple clips starting to pop up of him using some rather foul language that we can't show in this video. Dirty little You know, some things got said on his stream, and um, those things were, were just too too much for us as an organization to deal with. After his removal from the team, Mutex did make an apology video, but this was no ordinary back down. Yo, I appreciate the opportunity. I deadass appreciate the opportunity. It sucks I couldn't have made you guys the best SND team in the world and potentially the best team in the world because good luck finding anyone better than me. Like genuinely, like genuinely, good luck. Like you're never gonna find anyone as valuable as me when it comes to and search and destroy and the passion behind Call of Duty. Even Methods got it on the fun, mocking his two-faced approach. So sorry. I know I just completely destroyed my entire career. You will never find someone as experienced and as good at S&D than me. After taking a chance on a group of rookies heading into the Pro League qualifier, Midnight assured their players that they would be paid regardless of whether they qualified for the league. But in a big shock, Midnight overcame the odds and qualified, even with big teams like FaZe Clan missing out. But all this excitement quickly turned into frustration for the players on Midnight. Being on a relatively small org, players on Midnight had the aim of finding a new org to earn a higher salary. But with all five players signing lengthy contracts with seemingly no buyout clause, Midnight Esports effectively held them hostage. Eventually, things escalated to the point where MLG, who ran the league at the time, had to grant players the ability to transfer teams, effectively marking the ends of this underdog roster. At the opening event of the World War II season, a false bomb threat was called in, causing the entire event to be stopped and for the convention center to be evacuated. A security guard had seen an abandoned backpack which he suspected could have dynamite inside. Competition was subsequently delayed and resumed on Saturday, with the open bracket teams playing until 3.30 in the morning Sunday. This wasn't the last threat of the weekend though, because on Sunday another one was called in, further delaying the tournament. The same kid calls in a bomb threat and again, it's like that is just an ultimate vibe kill bro. Like. Much like the supreme agility situation from earlier in the iceberg, a UK player by the name of Nathan ghosted his teammates right before 2018 CWL Atlanta. His team was left to scramble just days before the tournament, resulting in them being unable to attend the tournament and Lightning Pandas took their spot. In other news, the mystery of Epsilon's Nathan dropping out of the Pro League still lingers. But it looks like there's no hard feelings. Dave tweeted, F Nathan. Oh, never mind. He still hasn't told us why he didn't turn up. Feels bad, man. One of the most talented players at their peak in Call of Duty history is Dylan. He burst onto the scene in Black Ops 4 and was instantly recognized as one of the best SMG players in the game. But over the next couple of years, all of that vanished. He no longer put up any performances near the level that he used to and was dropped by the London Royal Ravens to never be seen again, with all of his social medias disappearing. In a crazy turn of events, some details about Dylan have surfaced over the years, and to say the least, they're rather shocking. The He's chat really, really wants to know what you mean by having fun. Eats, eats, eats. Okay, <laughs> Sponge, you feel me? <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know? Dylan allegedly used some more extreme substances, which has been backed up by other pros, as well as his huge weight loss that he experienced in MW into Cold War. I mean, Dylan Todd is probably one of the biggest what ifs in COD history. Skump may well be synonymous with the Green Wall, but it was once a time where he joins their fiercest rivals, Team Envy. At the start of the COD Ghost season, following their 12th place finish at UMG Philadelphia, Skump announced that he would be leaving Optic in favor of Envy. Fans, they need to know why did you want to go to Envy in the first place? What was going through your head in that first move? When they approached me, it all seemed so tempting. Uh, obviously, I had a lot of anger built up inside of me, and uh, that just made it even more tempting, and I saw a lot of potential with that team. Me and Scump had our first falling out, and he joined Envy after he left our team at the beginning of Ghost. 
and he sent me a text word for word keep your friends close keep your enemies closer <laughs> it's keep- so cold <laughs> Seth was back on Optic a month later. Yeah. I think it was weeks. And I think it was a, a little bit of a mistake and a, a rash move and unthought of. And the rest was history for Scump, as he has been with the organization for well over a decade, becoming the face of the org. UK Call of Duty fans are always known to bring a different type of energy compared to American fans. Whether it's the booze or the football chants, they never fail to get loud. So at CWL London 2019, it's no wonder they were on their feet over this game between FaZe and Luminosity Gaming. The game had glitched, resulting in an undeserving loss being handed towards the FaZe team consisting of crowd favourites and fellow European COD players, Scraps and Zero. Despite the control point on Seaside definitely being captured before the Grav Slam came through, the game decided it was a win for the defensive side. And the referee said, whatever the game says, goes, regardless of what common sense might potentially dictate. This Game 3 loss proved devastating for FaZe as they went on to lose the series 3-2. And having seen the BS, fellow European player Tommy had a few words to rile up the crowd. And if you look closely at that crowd, a certain British Call of Duty fan can be seen. I'd just like to say, well, one question and one question only. What do we think of LG? Shit! What do we think of Sheet? LG! Thank you. Scump and Crimsix were the longest teaming duo of all time at one point, but their relationship quickly soured as Crimsix was dropped by Scump and Optic following their third place finish at Champs in 2019. Crimsix felt the loyalty that he had shown Scump during all those years was for nothing, and he wanted revenge. As a result, Crim even revoked Scump's invite to his wedding. With Crimsix now on fierce rivals Dallas Empire and Scump on the hex led Chicago Huntsman, tensions stood high between the teams. Fortunately, the two eventually mended their friendship with a funny tweet by Crimsix, and the former duo are once again friends at last. Denial Esports are a legendary but controversial organization in COD history. Winning the World Championship in 2015, the organization stayed on the fringes for the remainder of the Jetpack era while not properly paying their players before a return under new ownership in 2019. Zach Smith assumed ownership in December 2018 and was quickly embroiled in similar controversies. After new discussions of not paying players, alongside eccentric figure Blackbeard, who seemed to behave as the chief vibes officer of the team, Zack denied any problems and dropped this classic gem before the org again disappeared forever. If there's a fucking issue, come see me. I'm six foot four, fully f***ing tatted, I will smack the f*** out you boy. In 2019, Katie Bedford became the desk host for the Call of Duty League, and many of the community were big fans of her presenting skills. As COD switched to franchising, it seemed as though her contract would be renewed for another season. However, something in her past resurfaced, which changed everything. It turned out that Katie had put out a rather inappropriate tweet back in 2017 regarding protests at the time. After discovering more about her history and potentially the identity of her husband Christopher, the CDL decided not to take any risks in signing her again, and the community on Reddit expressed their anger as well. One of the biggest tragedies in esports is that of Fizip. Known for being arguably the best S&D mastermind of all time, he dominated third-party tournaments and also competed in the Pro League under H2K. But sadly, on October the 2nd, 2016, Fizzip passed away in a car accident at just 24 years of age. The community was heartbroken, with players, orgs, everyone as a whole coming together to commemorate his life, and an S&D memorial tournament is still put on to remember him nearly every year. At the time of the accident, there was some debate on the true story of events, but as the police report was released, it became clear that Fizzip was over the legal limit behind the wheel. There was a time where John of Envy was good enough to rival Prime Scump himself in the SMG role. After winning Champs MVP in 2016, John followed it up with solid performances in the next couple of seasons. He was also part of the Luminosity roster to win CWL Fort Worth 2019, and it was clear that John was a valuable asset to any CDL franchise heading into 2020. But in a big shock, John was notably absent from any of those rosters, leading many to question exactly what happened to him. What happened to John? Oh, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, I yeah. Don't know. yeah, okay. The community soon got their answer, as Crone of the CDL Intel account we mentioned earlier dropped a bombshell on Twitter, revealing that he had been banned for a year due to an incident in 2019. 
But this was certainly not the end of the saga, because a few months later, John put a tweet out of his own, indicating that his absence was due to health issues instead. A few months later, he tweeted out another picture of him around doctors, but there was still no clarity as to what actually happened to him, and with radio silence of the rest of the pro players, this led to the rest of the community speculating heavily on exactly what happened. From gambling to substance abuse, one Redditor even claimed that John was dealing with cancer. To this day, nobody really knows the reason, although the prevailing belief is that he was banned for being, let's say, the plug for Adderall abuse in the league behind the scenes, and the CDL were not willing to continue to let that slide. John, though, later returned in the later part of the Cold War season under Los Angeles Thieves, and then again on Paris Legion in the Vanguard year. In the middle of 2020, you may remember the Me Too movement, exposing various stories of abuse. At the same time, it was announced that the CDL commentators Benson and Momo would not be commentating any longer. Benson simply announced he wouldn't be working for Activision and the CDL anymore, choosing not to reveal why in his tweet. The timing of this move though was rather strange, it was mid-season and Champs was just around the corner. Many fans were left wondering what was truly going on behind the scenes, but we soon got our answer. It was then leaked by esports reporter Slasher that Benson had actually been fired for misconduct, with at least one alleged victim coming out on Twitter. Just a few weeks prior though, Momo announced he was released from Activision Blizzard. The reasoning was supposedly for messaging only female members of the gaming community for quote unquote trying his luck. Momo apologized to everyone for his actions. What further came out about Momo includes some terrifying accounts of multiple women who approached Activision occurring over a span of 10 years. As far as we can tell, none of these cases were ever proven in the court of law, and both commentators are once again active on X.com. Momo and Benson, however, were not the only CDL talent to depart for controversial reasons. In 2022, Veli joined as desk host, providing unmatched charisma and energy to the desk between games. But in a massive shock, Veli resigned from his job in the league following Major 4 that season, and it was soon revealed that this came following a drunken incident that occurred between Veli and some other members of the talent who he referred to as Caster 1 and Caster 3. Caster 1 and Caster 2 are talking. Obviously, I'm, I'm Caster 2, right? I'm talking with Caster 1. I've probably known this person half his life. And you know, we're cool. Nothing happened. We never touched each other. We never said anything hateful. We're just talking. And we're talking like cousins would or brothers would. It was fun. But um, there was a person that came outside and they put their hands on me. And when that happened, that was just something that I really really didn't like i told this person hey this friend's talking we're chilling relax like you know you're good stop this person kept putting their hands on me allegedly caster one was blaze while caster three was bryce according to veli and crimsix who made separate statements on the incident this is something like what happened veli and caster one were arguing over something petty prompting caster three to try and defuse the situation telling veli to calm down but things then escalated further between Caster 3 and Veli, with Caster 3 threatening to press charges against Veli himself. All of this drama led to Veli choosing to resign from the league, but the drama would not end there. Because when it was announced that Caster 3, aka Bryce, his contract, was not renewed for the MW3 season, Veli quite clearly celebrated it, proving to everyone that it's not just pro players that could be involved in heated rivalries. If you thought that was wild, what Yoshi did back in Black Ops 2 was just as dark. A 15-year-old with the alias Yoshi was somehow able to play matches with pro players like Najot, Fizzup, and Killer. On the surface level, sounds like a pretty wholesome story. However, Yoshi was no regular 15-year-old. It was said that he scammed people for GP credits, IP flooded people, lied about his age, and worst of all, faked cancer in an attempt to get closer to pro players. There's no hard evidence of all of this, but numerous pros such as Jcap have backed up the story. Understandably, Yoshi soon vanished from the scene. What happened at COD Champs 2016 between Optic and Cloud9 will go on in Call of Duty Infamy. We all know how that game ended. Assault wins the Game 5 Round 11 1 vs 1 against Formal to kick tournament favourites Optic out of the World Championship. But what's lesser known is what happened at the start of the match that fueled Cloud9's unrelenting fire. The crowd also f***ed you guys. They were calling Lace the N-word from oh, game dude, one. Dude. And not only dude. did that fuel Lace up, but bro, that fueled us 
all you know you, opt optic like, has done a, a, a and maybe it's different now i don't know they did a terrible job calling out their fan base when they did the wrong shit bro and i heard it from there Bro, it was everywhere. It was everywhere. There, like multiple, like not, angles. And, and, yo, multiple hard R, people. like not just yeah. N-word, like racial slurs full out. And like Lace's yep. family was in the crowd, bro. Yep. And the Something. Security dude. didn't kick him out. Like yeah. MLG didn't step in. Active, it was like nothing. It was like it fell yeah. on deaf ears. Optic Gaming is undoubtedly the face of competitive Call of Duty, with one of the biggest fan bases in esports. But in 2017, they came under fire as a few members hosted a party with high schoolers, providing them alcohol. Now, no one knows if anyone from Optic invited these high school girls or if it was a situation where they invited one person they know and they invited other people. We don't know the full story. We don't know how the girls ended up there, but I'm almost sure it's one of these situations where they invited someone that they knew that they trusted and somehow they invited these underage high school girls. Following this PR disaster, Jewel was cut from Optic, but it remains to be seen if the rest of the members were punished too. There you have it. This is the competitive quad I spoke. Let us know if we missed any in the comments section below and who knows, we might get a part two. Hit the like button if you enjoyed, subscribe for more content just like this.